Hello and welcome back to Grafter Branch Ministry. My name is Hannah Erb, and if this is your first time to our channel, welcome. It is a channel where my husband, Scotty Erb, and myself preach and teach out of the King James Bible on various different topics. In today's topic, we're going to be talking about gentle parenting and comparing it to scripture, seeing whether it's scriptural or not. And if any Christian, who anyone who calls themselves a Christian, should be doing the gentle parenting. We have a few examples and a lot of scriptures, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to explain gentle parenting. So to explain that, we're going to go to a few sources where they explain it themselves. Please be patient with me throughout this uh, study because I'm going to be manning this the best way I can possible with God's grace. So what is gentle parenting? Now, we're not just talking about being a gentle parent, but it is a parenting style. What is the gentle parenting style? The goal of gentle parenting is to raise confident. Let's go ahead and zoom this in. Is to raise confident, independent, and happy children through empathy, respect, and understanding and setting healthy boundaries. First of all, to raise a child is never in scripture, but to bring them up is scriptural. So it emphasizes on empathy, respect, understanding, and setting healthy boundaries. This parenting style focuses largely on age-appropriate development. Okay, so instead of focusing on punishment and reward, gentle parenting focuses on improving a child's self-awareness and understanding their behavior. This gentle parenting takes out the authority of the parent and leaves the child to self-regulate. This alone is not scriptural because... You know, in Proverbs 14, we're going to have the scriptures here on screen, but also turn with us in your own King James Bible. It's better to turn in your own King James Bible. I'm doing it on screen so everyone will have it right there in front of them to see without excuse. Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So if the child's left to self-regulate, They could seem like they're doing something, but the ends are the ways of death. It might seem good not to hit a child, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Then also in Proverbs 29, 15, it says clearly, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth to his mother to shame. We're going to see examples of bringing his mother to shame in this video. But right here, the rod and reproof give wisdom, and you cannot leave a child to himself and expect them to give themselves wisdom. There's another scripture here in Proverbs 22, verse 15. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So if you're sending the child to self-regulate in their room, this foolishness here will never depart from them. It's the rod of correction that drives that foolishness from. How can you expect a foolish adult or a foolish child to then correct itself? It needs a mother and father the way God has ordained it. So again, if you call yourself a Christian in any form of the fashion, obey his word. His word is what gives us the wisdom. We need to obey his word, especially in this regard. So just giving a clear definition, this is going to come into play over and over throughout this study. The, uh, the gentle parenting is through empathy. So you're empathizing with the child. You're respecting the child and gaining the respect of your own children. And you're helping them to understand age appropriately, setting healthy boundaries. So you're not giving commandments in this parenting style, but you're setting healthy boundaries with your child. And right here in this article, it says the idea is to be more like a coach for your kid, which again, kid is not in scripture. It's always child or children. The idea is to be more like a coach for your kid than a punisher, says this evil doctor, who this evil doctor, the same thing says right here, or you might spank them. Decision, a doc, a decision doctors say you shouldn't do. So they want you to go by doctor's orders against scriptural, the clear scripture that says the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. The clear scripture that says in Proverbs 23, 13, it tells you to withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. 
Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. The child's soul is on the line. And yes, it says beatest him. That EST right there is not uh, some kind of archaic word. It's not that we can't understand it. It's the continual action of beating. You'll have to continually chastise and correct your child because foolishness is bound in the heart of the child. And it is a work for the mother and father to do. But he won't die. And that's another thing about correcting with the rod. It should never, never, never be done in anger. In Psalms, this is where people take it too far sometimes. Psalms chapter 6, verse 1, it says, To the chief musician on Neganoth, upon Shemineth, a psalm of David, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thine hot displeasure, in thy hot displeasure. The Lord does not correct us as his children in his hot displeasure. He does not beat us to take anger, his anger out on us. But when we correct our children, we should have a sound mind. It should be for the child's benefit to drive that foolishness from them and not ever to satisfy our own uh, anger or something like that. So if you're ever angry that your child did something, and we're going to see it in an example, don't just cool off before you chastise them. Chastise them another time. It should never be done with anger. That can seriously hurt and damage children. But what it says right here is that he shall not die in Proverbs 23, verse 13 and 14. Okay, also, we're going to be looking at this example of this too. Proverbs 13, 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. So if you're keeping, if you're following this gentle parenting and you're sparing your rod, you really are hating your son. Remember, you'll deliver his soul from hell with the rod. So your child's going to end up going to hell because they're a rebellious, disobedient child that never had correction and don't understand authority. They do not understand authority because you're not the authority figure in their life. They're going to be stuck with PTSD if they ever join the military because they've never had anyone raise their voice or chastise them, which the military will do. And they'll be destroyed mentally because you withheld the rod from your son. As a Christian, we should not do that. It says, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. In Hebrews chapter 12, we know that it, the word of God tells us that chastisement is grievous. It's not joyous. Hebrews 12, 11. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth pe the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So yeah, nobody likes to do the chastening. Nobody likes to be chastened. But it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And that's why we're going to have an example of this lady named Emily, Emily Ferret. And she has no peace in her home. She thinks she deserves a better mother motherhood. And it's her own fault because she withholds the rod and she uses this gentle parenting technique. Okay, that's what gentle parenting is. Now, it's still good to be gentle to your children. I want to also tell you, you know, I'm not against being a gentle parent in the sense of, yeah, children need a gentle mom. They need the, nur uh, they need the nurturing mom. Let me show you those scriptures real quick before we progress. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verses 7, 1 Thessalonians, okay, it must be 2 Thessalonians, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and it's not, okay, well then, here's what we're going to do, we're going to go to the search right here, and type in cherisheth, okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, 1 Thessalonians Chapter 2, verse 7, it says, But we were gentle among you, okay? Even as a nurse cherisheth her children, it is good to be gentle to your children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. They're dear unto Paul. Yeah, and he nourishes, and he, as a nurse, cherisheth her children. He was gentle, very gentle, but he still 
Apostle Paul here in 1 Thessalonians. We're going to go to another one of his epistles in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 21. It says, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? Sorry if you couldn't see that. So yes, Paul still uses the rod on those he loves. The rod and reproof is the way of life, Proverbs 6.23 says. And also Proverbs 16.21, if you look it up, it talks about having sweetness of lips. So I'm not saying gentle. The opposite of gentle parenting is not harsh parenting. Please understand that. But it is... Gentle parenting is just a style that's come up recently. And please let me show you why this has come up recently. The World Health Organization, which is an extremely evil organization, the UN, has power over it. And here's a little article written off their website talking about it is time to end corporal punishment. Corporal punishment, if you don't know, just means the physical punishment like taking a rod to your child or your hand or anything. The scriptures never say to use your hand. It says to use a rod. The hands are for love, to give your lo children love and affection. The rod is used for correction. So it is time to end corporal punishment everywhere. They want you to go against scripture everywhere. And keep our prom our 2030 promise to children. So they've promised that the whole world would keep it illegal for anyone to uh, corporally punish or give the chastening rod to their children. And they are going over time. You can look up articles on this all over. They're taking it very seriously. There's a very hard push for this to meet this goal in six years. So they're kind of discouraged that not more people have made it illegal. And they're lying straight to your face in this article. Over 50 years of research has found that corporal punishment is associated with a wide range of harmful consequences to children with no benefits. Okay. I agree that there is a wrong way to do it. There is a wrong way to correct your children. And maybe that's what these evidences are based off of. But if you use the rod of correction, you will have the peaceable fruit of righteousness in your child's life. You shall deliver their soul from hell. There's nothing wrong with a good, hard spanking. The child will learn from that and will not do it again. But if you do this the wrong way, if you do it in your anger, you take it too far, or you don't have the child's understanding or their obedience, it's going to be in vain and you're going to cause a lot more harm than you are good. So we need to do this the scriptural way. And that's what we're talking about here today. The scriptural way to do this. But yeah, so there, there's a push here for 2030. That's only in six years, okay? Let me show you what they've done so far. On this Wikipedia search of child corporate punishment laws, they've already made it illegal in 73 countries and territories for you to corporally or use the rod on your children, corporal punishment. So here's a list of places that have already done this. Keep in mind, Australia right here, it's not on the list up here. This is in sequence of uh, just who did it last. The last one was uh, Thai Kiz Stan just this year. And they keep adding to this. But Australia so far, it's they're, they're striving really hard in Australia to make it illegal, even though it's not completely illegal there yet. And keep that in mind because it's going to come into play a little bit later. So let's look at an example. Here's an example of this woman named Emily Janine Ferret. We're going to, her, her page is right here. She's normalizing normal. Emily Ferret, life without the filter. Okay, she's very profane lady. You can't get very far. I mean, I tried to watch this video. It's one minute and 28 seconds. She does a podcast called I'm sorry very wicked woman I would not recommend it she has a very profane mouth and uses profanity like you know just in her daily speech and we're told in scripture to stay away from that if there are any Christian people out there who call themselves Christian watching and subscribing this lady it is not the biblical thing to do she is so far from Christianity 
it should be very obvious, but I wouldn't be surprised if over half of her subscribers call themselves Christian. We're supposed to keep profane language out of our speech. Okay, we're gonna see a example of gentle parenting from Emily Ferret. White right under my brow. <gasps> no, 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 that's very... Yeah. I need you to, can you walk away for a couple minutes here? Okay. Because mom's very angry. I'll let you come back, but I need to calm down. So can you walk away? Can I have some space for a couple minutes? Okay. Oh. <laughs> can you please go sit in the playroom for a minute so I can take some deep breaths and calm down? Well, at least I got it on my um, eyes before she dumped it out. Okay, so replaying this. Take notice of a few things as we right go through my here. brow. <gasps> She's wearing no, makeup. No, 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 That's very... Yeah. First of all, we don't know if this if the child had the commandment to not go into her mother's makeup or not. So a clear commandment would be needed before you could chastise a child. They should know when they do something wrong. The rod is for foolishness and for disobedience. Okay. I need you to, can you walk away for a couple? Notice how many times she asked her child to do something. She's pleading with her child. She's not giving the commandment go do this. Her child has every right. Can you go do this? And they would say no or something. It gives them reason to go against their mother, but they need a command. They need somebody, a parent to have authority, but gentle parenting has no authority. Also notice how she says she's very angry, but she has no signs of anger. This is going to really confuse the child when they come across somebody who truly is angry. This is just a bunch of confusion for emotions and uh, completely just anti-scriptural. Keep watching. A couple minutes here. Okay. So mom's very angry. Do you really think the child sounds like they're remorseful for doing this? I'll let you come back, but I need to calm down. So can you walk away? Can I have some space for a couple minutes? Okay. The child has no idea what's going on. This is not beneficial for the child at all. What's to keep this child from doing something again? Because she gets to go in the playroom? She just got rewarded for spilling makeup, her mother's very expensive makeup. I don't like my <laughs> Can you please go sit in the playroom for a minute so I can take some deep breaths and calm down? This is not a parenting style for Christians. This woman is not to be watched by Christians. She has a, re a reaching of over 8 million people right here on her most popular thing. And she is all about the gentle parenting. You can't watch very many of these without hearing, you know, a very profane cuss word and just evil speaking. And this is one of the many ways that they're pushing for the promise of 2030 to keep the, to end corporal punishment. So she's reaching 8 million. Satan has many other ministers. There's also another push for uh, for, you know, making corporal punishment illegal in all the countries. Another one. Well, okay. First of all, you might be thinking that, well, this is very harsh. How can you be a Christian? And how can you be saying such things? Well, these words are coming from God. And I'm showing you how we need to obey scripture. Look at just for instance, you know, you might say Jesus is only love. Excuse me as I figure this Jesus is only love, they say. Jesus would never say what you're saying. Well, Revelation 3.19, coming from the words of Jesus, it says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. 
Be zealous, therefore, and repent. If you are watching this video, you'll learn very quickly, gentle parenting is not for Christians. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. It's a, you've been deceived. There's many different propagandas done through the world, through these YouTubes and through TV shows and through billboards and signs. And it's messing with Christians, making them obey the way of the world rather than obeying Jesus Christ. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Okay? And if you don't think I'm full of love trying to tell you these things, well, we're told in John chapter 15, verse 12, it says, This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. So you rebuke those and you chasten those that you love. And we're told to love one another as uh, as Jesus loved us. And then, of course, we've already been to Hebrews chapter 12. But we know that in verse 8, we we'll look. We looked at verse uh, 11 last time. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. In verse 8 up here, it says, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So this gentle parenting movement is making bastards out of our children. Parents that hate their children, according to scripture. According to scripture. Proverbs 13, verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. You know, the King James Bible is the pure word of God. But even if you are using another version, they don't take out this rod part. So if you are in a perverted form of Christianity and you've been deceived by that too, still no excuse not to use your rod because it mentions it there. And we've already talked about her last video about uh, I'm sorry. She thinks she deserves to be a better, uh, have a better motherhood because her child give her so much grief. And again, that's because she's not giving them the rod. If she gave them the rod, she would have, she would have the peace that is promised. It's a gift of God, this rod. The uh, Proverbs 10, 1 says, The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. It's heavy to have that foolishness never left from them. Now, I know from personal experience, this is all... The main point of this whole thing is if you consider yourself a Christian, gentle parenting is not in scripture. We need to obey scripture. If you really consider yourself a believer in God's holy word, then we need to obey his word. Gentle parenting is not in God's word. Not one bit of it. It is propaganda today because the uh, World Health Organization, the UN, the United Nations, who want to make a new world order, they are pushing for the end of corporal punishment. This is not a movement of God. It's used through women, like I just showed you, Emily Ferret here. But it is also through TV shows. Are you familiar with Bluey? I know when I was going to a church building, I know personally that they were raving about this Bluey show. Didn't know much about it then. Still don't know that much about it now, but I know that they push for the gentle parenting. Let's go ahead and read this article that was written about somebody who has watched this TV show. Bluey. Let's see if I can make it bigger for everybody. Bluey. Bluey is an Australian em emanated series. Remember I told you remember about Australia? It's one of the ones that has not been completely illegalized for using the rod, but they're working hard at it. So that's where this one comes out, and it's to put this into the minds of people. Now, this is the second most popular streamed show today, or at least last year. So Bluey is an Australian animated series in a goldmine of parenting wisdom. You think it's for the children? No, it's working on the parents. It show, uh, often portrays realistic family dynamics. No, they want to make it realistic. And the importance of play. Okay. Is it a parenting show? Yes, it's not just a child's show. It's working on the parents. Here's some key lessons. They're talking about the importance of playing, patience and understanding, empathy and emotional intelligence, 
independence, okay? Handling misbehavior with calmness, not a rod, but with calmness, okay? This in handling interruptions. It's using techniques to do this. The, is this not what gentle parenting is? Empathy, respect, understanding, and setting healthy boundaries instead of... Uh, focusing on punishment or reward, gentle parenting focuses on improving a child's self-awareness and understanding of their own behavior. This is exactly what this show is doing. It's showing gentle parenting and Christians are falling for it. If you are a believer in Christ, you should not let your child watch this. You should not be watching this wicked show, this bluey. It is part of their propaganda to end corporal punishment in 2030 and they're pushing very hard we're going to push back with scripture if you are a believer in jesus christ you should not be doing this you'll just be going right uh, along with satan's will for the world if you don't believe me look at satan the satanic's temple fight against corporal punishment just look at their billboards our religion doesn't believe in hitting children so if you don't believe in hitting your child, like scripture obviously says, you're just lining straight up with Satan. Never be hit in school again. They're really pushing in the schools. If you haven't looked on this channel before, look on Grafted Branch Ministry and search up Oklahoma schools did a thing. And my husband, Scotty Herb, did a study about how the Satanic Temple is doing an after school program. And they're pushing that they should not be hit in school, out of school. They don't believe in corporal punishment. This is satanic. Do you remember the scripture I showed you about you'll deliver his soul from hell? Proverbs 23, verse 13 and 14. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with a rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. If you are still wanting to gentle parent after you read this, you might as well hawk up the biggest loogie that you can, spit it right in this part of your Bible, close it up, and put it on the bookshelf. Because that is what you're doing to God. And that is what you're doing. If you don't believe this part of scripture, you are sending your child straight to hell. You're going along with a satanic temple. There is a push for the 2030 promise to children. Satan if you know end time prophecy, then you'll know that uh, the world isn't getting better. In fact, there's many prophecies concerning this sort of thing. Second Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 3.2. For men, oh, well, let's start in 3.1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. This is gentle parenting. The rod brings obedience. Chastisement brings obedience. Love. You, when you love somebody, you chastise them. And when they love you, they will obey you. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. And it goes on. They're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They want a gentle life. They want a life full of happy happiness. And it's a false sense of reality where, oh, I'm very angry right now. No, when you're angry, you're, tr you're yelling, you're hollering, you're red in the face. Even God gets that way. Look up when he yells as a travailing woman. That's reality. This gentle parenting is not reality. Okay, it's it's prophesied though. Disobedient parents also in Romans chapter one, verse 30. And we'll start in verse uh, 128, chapter 128. And when, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they're kicking God out. God says, use the rod. We say, don't even punish your children. 
God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. That reprobate mind is going to cause them to be very defiled in their mind. It's going to cause them not to be realistic. It's going to cause them to have PTSD in real life when real life hits them. Okay, they're being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, full of envy. Okay, and then we get down to verse 30. Backbiters, haters of God. So much so they're becoming part of the satanic temple. This despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. This is not a light thing. Look at all the things it's listed with, without understanding. This whole gentle parenting thing focuses on their understanding. Where's it at? Yeah, right here. Through empathy, respect, and understanding. They're never going to get it without understanding. If you don't have the correction, you're going to have that foolishness bound in your heart as a child. Proverbs 22, 15. This is prophesied also in Matthew. This is after the catching away when the body of Christ is taken up in the twinkling of an eye. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 21, it says, and the brother shall de deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. You know, when she was asking, when Emily was asking her daughter, apparently her name's Hannah, oh, can you go away, please? Can you go into the pr uh, playroom? One day her child's going to say, no, I'm not going to do what you say. Why should I? There's no punishment. I can do what I want. And she's going to deliver when the child's probably going to public school. She's watching all these TV shows where they're coming in from other countries and it's all part of the UN's push. The child's going to get indoctrinated. It's called brainwashing. And they're going to deliver up their own parents and cause them to be put to death whenever the mark of the beast comes. And they're told the mark of the beast is good and anyone who does not take the mark of the beast will uh, deliver them up. If your child is using the rod on you, tell us. We'll have them arrested type of thing. They're going to put them to death by that. Mark 13, 12 again. It's echoed over here too. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father, the son, and the ch children shall raise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Children need a mom and dad, a scriptural mom and dad. If you consider yourself a Christian, if there's any part in you that thinks you believe in God, Jesus Christ, his word, gentle parenting is not for, for you. It's not for Christians. P children need a parent that will use the rod on them. We have to get over our own emotions and we have to obey God's word because we love him and we know his way is perfect. We have a way in our mind that seems right. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Children need a parent. A father is a type of the heavenly father. And the authority of parents is a type of the authority of God. So if they grow up without this picture, they're going to not have a good understanding in uh, reality of who God is. Ephesians 6, 2. Ephesians 6, 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Uh, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long upon on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition. Admonition means like a gentle rebuke of the Lord. You can still be gentle. Like I was saying, it's not, I'm not against being a gentle parent. You can be a gentle parent and still use the rod. Don't get all angry. I do like that about Emily Ferret in a way that, you know, if she was using that temperance in her voice while using the rod and explaining you disobeyed, I'm going to give you seven uh, beatings with the rod. And then she would not be so angry, you know, not uh, and, and beating him like this. But, you know, okay, taking them, I'm going to be correcting you. You disobeyed me. You were spilling juice all over the car, and I told you not to. Now you're going to get 
seven spankings for this. And then the child will lay over her lap or however she chose to do it and give spankings, seven of them, without being angry and giving that child the recompense of his reward. The child disobeyed you, the child will get spanked. And that's reality. When we disobey God, we get ch chastened of the Lord. And there is a judgment seat of Christ. We will be judged for everything done in our bodies. Let me show you that scripture real quick. Romans chapter 14. In verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. If you are a Christian. If you are not a Christian. Revelation chapter 20 is your judgment. Revelation 20 verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found a place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged... There's a judgment. Every man, according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And there they will be punished. There is a punishment. Matthew 5, 20, 46 right here. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So get real. God punishes us. God chastises us. For those who are saved, we will not go to hell. If you believe that Jesus Christ is, manifest, is manifested in the flesh and he came and died for our sins. First Timothy 3. Let's go ahead and get into the gospel. 1 Timothy 3, 6, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received, on into, uh, received up into glory. If you don't know for sure that you are saved today, there is nothing more important, nothing that you couldn't get right today. You, you need to know that you're saved. There's nothing more important. Is what I'm trying to say. We're talking, this whole study is talking about children and chastising them. In order to be a child, you had to be born. If you're born, and I'm talking to you right now, you were born in the flesh. John chapter 3. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you were born, but have you been born again? Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? I'm not talking about baptism. I'm talking about having a spiritual birth. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We were born of the water when our mother's water broke, and she delivered us. Have you been born of the Spirit? That comes after the physical birth. It doesn't happen automatically. Not everybody is saved and been born again. In verse six, it says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. If you are not born again, you will have the punishment everlasting in the flames of fire. But if you are saved, then you will have the chastisement of the Lord here while you're in the flesh. How do you get saved? Romans chapter 10, and in verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, who's God manifested in the flesh, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you call upon, you confess the Lord Jesus, and believe truly in your heart that he's the one who died for you about 2,000 years ago, and he rose from the, from the grave. In verse 10, it says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed.
You call upon the Lord from a pure heart. That's how you're saved. And he will still chasten you because whom he loves, he rebukes and chastens. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. This gentle parenting is going to take you so far from the truth. That's what the study is about. It's for Christians, really. If you're a Christian and you're following this gentle parenting push, it's propaganda. It's an attack. It's this right here. They're pushing for their 2030 promise to children from the World Health Organization. The United Nations that's going to bring in the Antichrist system. The New World Order. From Satan. It all goes in hand in hand and it's all against the word of God. Children need chastening. Let's close here with these last couple of verses. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Despise not that chastening. But people are spinning right in the Bible at this place. That's what they're doing with gentle parenting. They're hating God. They're despising his chastening. It's the reality of it. If you have terrible children, it's because they weren't trained properly. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. If it's too late and you already got your past this point where you can't train them up anymore, just keep praying. You can always do something more. Verse 15, remember, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. I've heard personal testimonies of brothers and sisters in Christ that said, I was a gentle parent. And now my child doesn't talk to me or I was gentle parented and I overruled my parents and I ruled the house and I allowed and my teen years allowed uh, they allowed my girlfriend to come over and fornicated and did things against God because their parents were gentle parenting, causing their children to get into more deeper sin. That's what gentle parenting caused. Children won't correct themselves. Foolishness is bound in their hearts. And they'll continue sinning and sinning. There's a way which seemeth right unto the man, and the, uh, the end of those ways are death. They need parents to correct them. Proverbs 23. I'm going to leave with this one. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, thou shalt not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Please take heed to the word of God, the scriptures that I've shown you on the screen here. Hopefully you're following along. If you do consider yourself to be a Christian, gentle parenting is not for you. It is not for us as Christians. It is not scriptural. It is going the other direct opposite way. Here's a gospel track that we make here uh, from Grafter Branch Ministry. God's way or your way? God's way or gentle parenting? Because you can't have both. You can't, just because it's illegal in your country, you can't decide to spray them with some sort of lavender frou-frou spray that your son, I don't like it. That's not punishment. You can't send them to put their nose in the corner. That's not punishment. That's just prolonging and dealing with it while they see that they're in their wrath in the corner. No, just take the correction rod. Age appropriate correction rod. And you chastise them. As it seems fit, not in your anger, and correct them. Not by spraying them. Not by avoiding it some other way, use the rod. That's the Christian thing to do. So I thank you for watching this video. I hope it was a blessing and that the Lord was glorified. May it have effectual working in your life today. Thank you, and I'll see you again in other videos. Bye-bye.